One day in my remote sensing class, when I was talking about lenses and sensors and pixels, I was asked why lenses are round and pixels are square. I was explaining that a pixel does not represent a perfect square on the ground, and approximately 50% of the information about an individual pixel contains recorded energy from the surface surrounding it because of the shape of the sensors. So why not make pixels and sensors the same shape so that all of the information collected by the sensor is from the area represented by the pixel, they asked. Here's why not. First off, what is a pixel? A pixel is a picture element that is often represented as a geometric square. So why are pixels square? It's all this baby's fault. Well, actually, it's the baby's father's fault. And Russell Kirsch says he's sorry. More than 50 years ago, Kirsch took a picture of his infant son and scanned it into a computer. It was the first digital image, a grainy black and white baby picture, that literally changed the way we view the world. With it, the smoothness of images captured on film was shattered to bits. The square pixel became the norm. Thanks in part to Kirsch, and the world got a little bit rougher around the edges. Kirsch made the first digital image using apparatus that transformed his picture into the binary language of computers, a regular grid of zeros and ones, a mere 176 by 176 pixels. That first image was built from roughly one to one thousandth the information in the pictures captured with today's digital cameras. Back then, the computer's memory capacity limited the image's size, but today, bits have become so cheap that a person can walk around with thousands of digital baby photos stored on a pocket-sized device that also makes phone calls, browses the internet, and even takes photos. Yet science is still grappling with the limits set by the square pixel. Squares was a logical thing to do, Kirsch says. He also says, of course, the logical thing was not the only possibility, but we used squares. It was something very foolish that everyone in the world has been suffering from ever since. Each of those little rectangles is an integrated circuit, sensor in the current context. Printed on the big circular silicon blank, they're cut out from the blank, packaged up, and eventually end up in your camera. The more that can fit on the blank, the less material wasted, and the cheaper each finished sensor is. Camera sensors, and all chips for that matter, are rectangular to maximize silicone wafer yield. In addition to redu reducing material waste, square pixels become the norm because there needed to be an industry standard to avoid compatibility issues over different devices. Square pixels stuck due to their simplicity. Similarly, round images probably didn't lend themselves well to printmaking. In any case, rectangular square images became the standard and digital simply continues the tradition. For digital cameras, particularly DSLRs, did rectangular 35mm for film format is still very much the measure by which digital sensors are compared to. <laughs> Pixels are commonly squares because squares fit together without leaving gaps, have sides of equal length and can be mapped to a grid without two axes, horizontal and vertical. If pixels were circles, there would be gaps when surrounded by neighboring circles. Not ideal for creating smooth images on the screen. Typography. It's far easier to design, draw, and control a font on a one-to-one -one pixel grid than it is on a rectangular grid. In fact, as one-to-one -one is the smallest common denominator, it's, it provides the highest level of fidelity when designing an interface. This, I believe, is the strongest argument for why pixels are square. But aren't there non-square pixels? Yes, digital video footage is almost always rectangular pixels. Computer-generated images are almost always square pixels. Why is there a difference? Isn't it always best to work with square pixels? There is a difference because engineers want to make a higher resolution television image without changing the number of scan lines. And no, it's not always best to work with square pixels. What about a hex grid like a honeycomb? Each pixel shares an edge with six other pixels, rather than sharing an edge with four pixels and a corner with four more pixels. It could be done. It's certainly been thought of, and if you ignore certain practical issues, it might be even better. Bees would probably agree, since they construct honeycomb in hexagon shapes. In fact, when you get down to the subpixel level, some displays are actually approximating this and it has its advantages due to needing to have a red, green, and blue component. Squares don't divide up into thirds quite as well as hexagons. One negative is that rectangular images displayed on a hex grid would have ragged edges. In theory, we could get rid of the idea of rectangular images. 
and have all image borders at 30, negative 30, or 90 degrees rather than 0 and 90. But that is probably a tough sell anyway with high definition displays like on the latest iPhones and iPads, the ragged edges might not matter so much. The other big negative is that the math is harder. Not that much harder, but it certainly complicates things for programmers to have to think in hex grid terms. So higher level software will probably stay thinking of graphics as having a one-to-one -one regular grid, while the display hardware then sorts things out while mapping things to a hex grid screen. However, there are some focal planes that have circular pixels, but leave some of the photons in the dead space around the pixels. It's a huge waste of silicon to make round sensors. If you compare a 35 millimeter by 35 millimeter square sensor to a 35 millimeter diameter sensor, they take effectively the same amount of silicon to make. The circles waste about 21% of the area. Another problem is how do you read data out of the sensor? What is a much easier task with a square sensor, every row or column has the same number of sites to read, becomes a problem with a circle. Only two rows or columns share the same number of sites to read. It's much easier to deal with the data in a large matrix than as individual rows. Linear algebra can be done very quickly by DSPs these days. Even discounting the technical problems with making round sensors, pretty much everything else in the photo industry is designed for rectangular in output. It is a lot more complicated to handle circular paper stocks than it is to handle rectangular. What technical problems? The challenges of constructing the body need to be overcome. The shutter has to travel further. The mirror has to be larger. The mirror has to flip up higher so as not to obstruct now visible top of the circle. All the parts inside that hold the elements are machined on a lathe. It is set once and all the sides are equal. If square elements were used, they would have to machine a square holder to exactly equal depths on all four sides, which would all cost more. In some lenses, the front element rotates with respect to the camera when zooming or focusing. Having a rectangular aperture would cause parts of the image to go black. To have a lens in which all points have anything like the corrective, the correct refractive effect, relative to a flat film plane, you have to make the lens circular. And even then, film and lens aren't perfectly compatible. Imagine the distortion you'd get where the curved sides join if you try to combine curvatures into a rectangle. Lenses have stayed circular out of feasibility. Round glass elements are easier to make. They allow for better movement of elements for zooming and focusing. The aperture diaphragms are more easily housed in the tubular lenses. Film is easier to make in strip than a circle, and square film crops the beginning circular image. With digital, it's a wafer in rows cut in lines. Chips are square, wafers are round. Wafers are made by slicing crystal semiconductor starter into cylinders. Due to crystal growing, this results in round, flat wafers. Round lenses produce rectangular pictures. What's up with that? The lens produces a round image, but the part that captures the image, the sensor or film, is square. So you get to keep only a portion of what the camera saw. The square fits neatly inside the round imaging circle. If you somehow loaded the camera with a special circular film, you could conceivably get round photos, but it isn't practical. Lens tend to get soft around the edges. Not only is it much easier to make the square image sensors and square film, but the camera gets the best part of the image. Even on today's top-end cameras, the edges will tend to be not as sharp. This stems from the fact that the camera lens doesn't produce the picture directly. Instead, the lens works in conjunction with another key part of the camera to produce the picture. In older cameras, that other key element is called film. In newer digital cameras, it's known as the image sensor. As light bounces off an object you're photographing, that light enters through the camera's lens. The job of the lens is to bend that light and focus it onto the film or image sensor. A round camera lens does produce a round image inside the camera. However, the outer edges of the round image 
will have more distortions, sometimes called aberrations, than the part of the image closer to the center. This is because the light must be bent more to reach the outer edges of the circular image. Correct for these aberrations and end up with the best image possible, the rectangular sensor crops out the outer edges of the circular image from the lens. In other words, it only keeps the best part of the image from the lens. This gives you better photographs than you would get if you kept the entire circular image from the lens. Early camera makers quickly figured out that round lenses did the most efficient jobs of focusing light onto film. Could a lens be made into a different shape, such as a triangle? Of course, lenses can be made into any shape, but camera pioneers figured out early on that round lenses created the best images on film. For aesthetic reasons, we make a rectangular lens by cutting off the edges of a circular lens, as in eyeglasses or magnifiers. But we don't try and combine these with shutters, diaphragms, and focusing helixes, all of which work best in circular patterns. Each and every lens, may it be spherical or aspherical, has aberrations which increase with the distance between the lens element part in question and the axis. Of course, with a round lens, the parts with the longest distance to the axis all have the same distance, and therefore the same amount of aberration. With a rectangular lens, some points on the edge would be closer to the axis than others. So some parts of the lens would have higher aberrations than other ones, which would make optical design more difficult. Some very old cameras, like the early Kodak box cameras, shot circular images. As film became more popularly available in reels or rolls, it was only natural that images were shot in rectangles and squares to use more film space. Similarly, round images probably didn't lend themselves well to printmaking. In any case, rectangular or square images became the standard and digital simply continues the tradition. For digital cameras, particularly DSLRs, rectangular 35mm film format is still very much the measure by which digital sensors are compared to.